Well, good morning. Good morning here from Tokyo in Japan. My name is Greg Story. I'm the president of Dalkani Training. Here in Japan, I want to talk about personal branding. So we know first impressions, very, very critical. Interestingly enough, we've been teaching high performance presentations here over many years. And maybe say five years ago, when I'd ask people, you know, how long does it take to make a first impression? People would say, Oh, three minutes, you know, five minutes, something like this. Guess what it's down to today? Three seconds. Three seconds. People are talking about personal brand, first impressions in the first three seconds. Oh my God. So what does that mean for us? You know, if we're in the company, uh, we're asked to give a presentation, maybe there's people in the room who don't know us, and it might be the big bosses, for example, and we've got to make a presentation they're going to make a judgment about us based on that first impression in the first three seconds. Wow. And then they're going to justify that first impression they get with how we come across later. That's normally how it works, right? We get a first impression, then we, we back it up later and we check. But surprisingly too, we very rarely back up on the first impression. We tend to stick with our first impression and see that right the way through. So really those first few seconds are very, very critical when we're dealing. Now, particularly if it's a public situation where you're representing a company and you're giving a talk, how you start the talk, all of those things become very, very major. But let's, let's dive into a couple of those because if you think about it, you're inside the company, you've got to get a report on something, it's a project they're working on, or it's a, maybe a strategy that you're proposing or an idea that you want to project to the audience of your peers or your bosses. How do you do that? Now, normally you're not standing up, probably you're sitting down. In a lot of cases, you won't be standing up, you'll be sitting down. How are you sitting? How are you sitting? Are you hunched over, looking at your notes? Are you sitting up nice and straight, good posture, sitting high, high in the seat? Are you making eye contact with people in the room when you talk, or are you just buried, looking at the spreadsheet, talking to the spreadsheet and not talking to your audience? And why that eye contact is important, because we want to engage with our audience. They want to be spoken at. They want to be involved. They want to be spoken with. So eye contact gets them to come to you as you're making the point. So you might have a particular thing you want to express, and you're going to combine a couple of things. Like I'm using gestures now to try and give some strength to what I'm saying. You might want to hit some key words to give some strength to those key words, and you want to combine that with eye contact. But Here's a little hint, particularly in Japan, right? Don't keep staring at people for long periods of time, because in Japan that makes people very, very uncomfortable. About six seconds is good. It's enough to have engagement with what you're saying, but not burning a hole in their retina and making them feel un this is an unpleasant situation. So yes, you want to make that eye contact, you want to engage, you want to get that point across, and then shift your gaze to the next person and then engage with them. And you just keep rolling this, depending on the size of your audience, keep rolling it right through the whole presentation. That works very, very well for engaging the audience. So they feel, oh, the speaker is talking directly to me. That's the feeling you want. They're speaking directly, there's a lot of people here, but they're talking directly to me. And that really builds that engagement. So sitting tall, not looking over, crunched over, looking at your notes, not looking down, reading, and not making the eye contact. If you even have to read something, that's okay, but then pick up the eyes and then talk to people, right? And it's best if you don't read any text. If you can avoid that, don't read the text because you know your subject. You can speak about your subject. And you know if you need to glance down and check something and look up again, hey, no problem. You have to memorize the whole thing, that's not important. Speak to the material and have the confidence to look down and look up again and keep going. No one's going to say, oh, look, they checked their notes. People don't care. Actually, they don't care. What they don't like, though, is you don't engage with them at all and you just look down. Or I've seen this so many times. How about yourself? Have you seen this? One half of the room, usually the left side, I don't know why that is, left side of the room gets, that half of the room gets all the attention and the people over here, no attention, right? So don't do that. Look, different parts of your audience, make sure it's the people left, center, right, front, back, all those pockets you're dealing with everyone. So the whole audience is feeling engaged. And same in any sort of presentation, be it a public one or inside the company. The other thing is your ability to open with what you're doing, because you know, Man, we talk about the age of disruption. You read a lot about that. Oh, this is the age of disruption with technology. Well, 
What I find with, with speaking to audiences, be it inside the company or be it outside the company, I call it the age of distraction. I don't know why people are so distracted today. Maybe it's because we're just such a busy, 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 you know, human race these days. We've got so much technology which speeds things up, everything speeds up. But we've also got phones which we can escape to pretty quickly. And if you're not engaging, if you're not really capturing people's attention, they will escape pretty under the desk, you know, they're pretty they're surreptitiously. They've got a little phone under the desk there and they're scrolling, they're not listening to you anymore. They've disappeared. So your opening tells them, oh, is this something that's going to be valuable? Uh, do I want to listen to this person? Does this person sound credible? And this is where the personal brand comes in, your credibility. So how you're sitting or how you're standing becomes important, how you're engaging with your audience becomes important for your credibility, and how you kick off, very, very important, because it's not just a matter of, well, I've got my talk, and this is how I start my talk, and away I go. You've got to crash through here, you've got to crash through all of those other things that are competing for the mere mind time because they're thinking about what happened yesterday, they're thinking about what's going to happen today, they're thinking about what they've got to do later. All this stuff is occupying their mind, and you come along, and then suddenly you break into their concentration. So it better be good. It better be something they go, oh, right, park all of that. I'm going to concentrate on right here and now to what this person's saying, because I like what they're saying, I like the way they're saying it, and I feel this person's actually got some value and I can trust them. So, you know, personal brand, first impression, it's all about trust, isn't it? It's all about credibility and trust. And in anything, you know, in the sales area or in the leadership area or any area at all, really, if you think about it, you're dealing with other people, we're always selling ourselves. You know, we're selling ourselves. We're selling, believe me, trust me, buy me, and then they buy your idea, or they buy what you're discussing or buying the knowledge you want to present, but they buy you first and then they accept what comes next. But people often get that around the wrong way. They think, oh, well, I don't have to be particularly engaging or particularly, you know, having great personal brand or having a great first impression because my knowledge is really good. This is really good stuff and that'll overcome all these other problems. Well, we know, we know from research that if you aren't grabbing them initially correctly and getting that right first impression, uh, well, you're going to lose, basically, you're going to lose 93% of the message because they're not going to be concentrating on what you're saying. They're distracted. So you're losing 93%. All that fabulous knowledge, all that fabulous expertise you've got to share, phew, it's gone. It's gone. There's 93% gone. So we can't have that. So we've got to make sure that first impression, personal brand, builds a trust, builds a credibility. Opening is very important. How you look, of course, is very important. Not in the sense of... You know, you will, you know, particularly got an expensive suit or expensive, you know, outfit on. You know, not that type of thing. It's, it's how you come across, how confident do you look? Are you doing a lot of umming and ahhing? And I mean, how many people have you heard start a presentation of any type with, um, uh, or in Japanese, you know, eto, ano. This is a cushion they put at the front of what they're going to say to give them a little bit of thinking time about what they're going to say next. Well, you know what? Silence is pretty good too. Don't say anything. Think about it and then go. And the first word, pick that first word and hit that first word hard. Hit that first word hard because then there's no hesitation. You're straight into that first sentence and it comes out nicely. And when you get to that first sentence, just just purse the lips. When you purse your lips, no ums, ahs, anos, etos can come out. You've killed that right there. And you just keep practicing that over time. And finally, you've pretty much get rid of all of those hesitations. Because that's what they sound like. Um, uh, does not sound certain, does not sound like, hey, I know what I'm talking about. I'm confident. I've got a key message here. I want to give it to you. It sounds like, well, I'm not really sure. I'm not confident. Uh, don't buy me because I don't believe it myself because I'm not even sure about it. That's the message you're giving out. That's the first impression. You're clueless is actually the first impression. Let's not do that. Let's have your silence, first word, boom, hit the first word and then let it flow. Purse your lips at the end and just keep doing that sentence by sentence. And over time, and I, I used to be an ummer and ah, I can tell you I was a shocker. You know, I didn't have that confidence. I didn't know what I wanted to say. I was thinking, I was pausing and using ah to cover the pause. 
And then I, over time I learned to use that little technique of, of hitting the first word, pursing my lips, repeating, repeating, and finally I could pretty much eliminate, not perfectly, but pretty much eliminate it. So we show we are confident, we show we are, are capable, we show we've got something important to say by the value proposition we're putting up for the first things that come out of our mouth. So that's got to be a bit breakthrough. It's got to grab people's attention. It might be something very simple as there are three things we need to cover that are critical for the success of the business or this project or whatever you're talking about. Let me get into it and explain what they are. Then people know, okay, there's three things coming. They're going to be important. They're going to be critical. I want to know what they are. Or you might say, you know, there's been a major finding in research that's going to change everything in the industry, if that's the case, right? And then people, oh, wow, what's that? I want to know about that. So you're, you're teasing out interest. You're saying things in a way that your audience is going to be thinking, oh, I want to hear this. I'm going to put my phone down. I'm going to give this person my full attention. So your personal brand obviously needs to have knowledge. It needs to have credibility around the expertise area that you cover. But you can have as much expertise and knowledge as you like, but if you're not getting the credibility and trust part done through that first impression, which is your personal brand, by the way, then you are not going to be successful at all. This is something that's very, very critical. We have to be very, very, very sure that we've thought about all of that before we start. This is not, oh, I'll get there and I'll do it on the fly and I'll ad lib. No, don't ad lib. Prepare. And if you possibly can do it, even with an internal uh, company meeting, Rehearse. Practice. Because you will find that by doing it a number of times, you start to become more comfortable, you look more confident, you feel more comfortable, you get a rhythm, you get a cadence in the way you express things. And the whole impression changes. This person comes across as knowledgeable, credible, confident. They seem like someone we can believe. I, I believe I can trust what they're saying. I like the cut of their jib. This person has got credibility with me. These are things we want to generate in a first impression, which is our personal brand. And as I said, in the first three seconds, your personal brand is decided. <laughs> That's a bit of a shock, is not it? When, that, when people are telling me that in the training, the high impact presentations training, and by the way, fantastic program. Two days, two instructors, everything video, massive amount of coaching. Really, really, really big insight from that program for me. But when I was teaching it, as well as taking it, uh, I noticed, wow, these sh you know, spans of, of first impression have come right down. That means so much more to us as, as presenters to get this right. And you know, this sort of stuff is all knowledge, isn't it? Knowing this sort of stuff and, and thinking about these things before you do it is just plain knowledge. Wouldn't it be great if you get some more knowledge about this? And wouldn't it be great if it was free? And wouldn't it be great if it was easy to get? Well, it is fantastically easy to get. Go to iTunes, type into the search bar, The Presentations Japan Series. The Presentations Japan Series. And you will find there are 117, as of today anyway, it's a weekly podcast, 117 podcasts. Man, it's going through the micro detail of everything audience, planning, standing style, gestures, eye contact, voice modulation, dealing with difficult questions, you know, it's got the works basically. You know, I was often say, if you if I ask you, could you sit down and write 117 things to think about when presenting, you know, could you do that? Well, don't worry about doing that, it's done. It's done. Just go to iTunes, it's all there. This is the genius of this modern age that we can go and listen to podcasts for free and learn a lot. I do that. I listen to a number of podcasts. I, got, I mean, I've got icons all over my phone, uh, you know, and I've got these podcasts, lots and lots of them uh, picked up, which I find very useful. They're, they're, mine's under 20 minutes, so they're very you know, digestible. They're bite-sized pieces, really. This is something that you will find will be very, very helpful for you. So here's my suggestion. Think about personal brand, which is going to be decided in the first three seconds based on first impression. Don't leave that to random chance. Decide what that first impression is that you want. Think about how you're going to start and think about what you're going to do to build that trust by the things that have come out of your mouth, how you're going to use your eye contact to engage your audience. And then as you go through your presentation, just keep adding more credibility to what you're saying and rehearse it and rehearse it and rehearse it. And if you do that, you will be extremely successful. And not only successful, you will stand out amongst the crowd because most people are hopeless, as you well know, because you see them all the time. Don't join that crowd of losers. Be a winner and prepare yourself for success. So good luck with that. I hope that goes well. And go to 
the presentations Japan series on iTunes. You'll find that very helpful. If you want to get some more information about presentation training, our website is enjapan.dalecarnegie.com. Have a look at that. Go and have a look at High Impact Presentations. Brilliant course. You do yourself a favor. If there's one thing that's going to help you in your career to really lift it immediately in two days is going to be this program. Two-day program, you come in here, you go out there, you are changed. You are changed. Why do I know that? I see it. Every class. Every class. Every person. It gets the highest rankings out of all of our programs on our feedback. Highest ranking by far. Because it's so, it's so powerful. So the Presentation Japan series on iTunes, high impact presentations, details are on our website. And also we've got 760 odd videos now on our TV channel on YouTube. So you have a look for uh, Japan Dale Carnegie TV on YouTube. You'll see lots of videos there which are also free, which will also help you. So we want to provide those resources. We want to help you. We want to have some impact around here. And we want to make sure that your personal brand and your first impression are really working for you. So good luck with that. <music>